Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about development of hind guts. The three important structure which are involved in the development of hind gut. The first one is the allantois, then cloacal membrane and the third one is the urorectal septum. The allantois is the one which divides the cloaca into, this is the endodermal cloaca. This divides the endodermal cloaca into pre-allantoic and post-allantoic. That is, this is the allantois. Above the allantois, it is considered as a pre-allantoic. And below the allantois, it is a dilated part which is called a post-allantoic part. This pre-allantoic part which is involved in the formation of a distal third of the transverse colon, descending colon and sigmoid colon. And the post allantoic part is going to form the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal. So below that and the ventrally an extension of a membrane can be seen that is a cloacal membrane. This cloacal membrane it is a bilaminar membrane which has both endodermal and ectodermal layer. In between these two there is no invagination of mesodermal cells. Behind the hind gut, this is the primitive streak. So from the primitive streak, the mesodermal cells which are migrate through this bilaminar membrane which enters into the ventral wall. Which enters into the ventral wall and this going to form the infraumbilical part of the abdomen. Previously, I told bilaminar membrane, cloacal membrane is a bilaminar membrane. There is no invagination of the mesoderm. So, this also we have to remember when you see about the development of hindgut. The primitive streak which is present behind the hindgut, the mesodermal cells which are migrate, migrate through this and which enters into the ventral wall and this going to form the infraumbilical part of the abdomen. And this cloacal membrane is limited on either side by the elevation of the genital tubercle. Next, the urorectal septum which grows deeper which divides the endodermal cloaca into anterior part and posterior part. The anterior part is called the urogenital sinus and the posterior part becomes the primitive rectum. The part which is connecting the urogenital sinus and the rectum, um, primitive rectum is through the cloacal duct. So if you see the urorectal septum in the coronal section, it is formed by a three elements. One vertical element and two lateral folds which is called a Rathke's projections. And this contains the mesonephric and paramesonephric ducts. These three elements together combined forms the urorectal septum. The urorectal septum which grows deeper, it ends at the cloacal membrane. So now it forms anterior as a urogenital membrane and posterior becomes anal membrane. And the point where the urorectal septum ends at the cloacal membrane becomes the future perineal body. So behind this perineal body, the backward growth occurs, proliferation occurs and this produces an anal pit. Then the mesenchymal cells which are uh, again it proliferates around this proctidium. And this going to separate the anal part from the urogenital membrane. And now the anal pit become canalized and this becomes the anal canal and this going to communicate with the rectum. So like this the anal canal is formed from the two sources. One is from the endodermal source and another one is from the ectodermal source. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please share and subscribe and click the bell icon.